You know, I understand that with these sort of videos, you typically explain what your reasoning behind doing it is, but I got nothing. We're using a banana. That's it. That's my reason. As Fallout 76, I mean, Fallout 4 loaded up, I prepared myself for an out of this world experience, and then I remembered something terrible. Not a single one of the mods I downloaded from my last video actually got removed, so they were still here. This was going to make my challenge all the more difficult, as I would have to endure seeing My Little Ponies and anime weebs the entire time. But then I realized that if you can't beat them, join them. Men, take note of Nate here, because he is the literal peak of male manliness. You cannot outdo Nate, nor can you run. He will find you. I then opened my door to a complete stranger who smelled of elderberries. He talked more aggressively than a Marvel fan did through the entirety of Avengers Endgame, explaining the movie concept right in front of me, you dorkus! I'm watching the same movie! I chose the perfect name and build type for what my challenge was going to be. Wielding a banana in the apocalypse requires brute strength and charisma. Remember that. Ahead, Be honey. still, my child. Your time will come. Our family then sat down to enjoy some Saturday morning cartoons. Confirmed reports. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonation. Billy thought he could run faster than me, but when I engaged my Naruto mode, Billy faced emotional nuclear annihilation before physical nuclear annihilation. He's you fine. are then forced into watching a local be street okay. war between Walmart and Target, I love you. and they took it too far. Oh, they then took me through a casual Black Friday shopping ritual. Everyone, please step off the elevator. Stole my child, killed my man Nate, looked at me funny, and then this is where my adventure truly began. This was hands down the hardest part of the entire campaign right here, as I was sworn to only kill things with a banana so I couldn't kill anything with my fists, I had to desperately run through the vault using a classic flank strategy to kite the rouches into submission. A punch from a roach hand is the equivalent of getting shot 13 times in the brain with a close range shotgun. Finally, after locking all of the roaches away, I called them all a bunch of heathens to make them rethink their life choices and maybe get into a glee club or something. Sadly, my victory was short lived as I had to wait until the roaches thought I was gone, but the roaches are always watching. When I hit the homeland, I knew what my first objective was, banana. Sadly, this victory was also short-lived as my game crashed to too much anime. When I finally got back in, I had a very engaging chat with Codsworth. Someone took him. They stole my baby. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. And found a gorilla who would join me on my quest. <laughs> now, anyone who's anyone, to quote Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius the movie, knows that a banana can only be forged with a 44 pistol, a bag of fertilizer, and a glowing fungus. It's basic science, people. In my quest for those items, I made Gorilla sit on a pony because she was bothering me with her speech about dying to radiation poisoning or something. Then I went to obtain my first item, the 44, which was simply on a dead guy outside of Sanctuary. I then got mauled by Molens. Next up, Glowing Fungus, which literally spawns beneath the red rocket. And finally, we stole a bag of fertilizer from a very wealthy family who was using it to feed their strange cat. Meow. I had everything I needed, and could now craft the only thing I could use to beat this game. A banana. Gun. Eager to see how mediocre and pathetic this weapon was that I would have to use for the entirety of the game, I headed to Concord. Here, I realized that this was going to be a really, really tough challenge. The Raiders are almost through the door. I talked to Preston and Sturgis to get that ball rolling. I then shot up the town. After my escapade of destruction had ended, I had a mission to actually beat this game. The only thing holding me back? The moon. It was so hypnotizing I couldn't stop looking at it. I then proceeded to help Buzz Lightyear fight off the chocolate zombies, which, to my surprise, were incredibly weak to bananas. When I arrived at Diamond City, I accidentally shot Piper. Then I accidentally shot the mayor, and then they accidentally shot me. So I had to get in the old-fashioned way. After a short conversation with the mayor, whatever, <laughs> I went to the detective agency and became such a charismatic overlord that they actually caught on to me and denied me money. Don't play games with me. 
I felt embarrassed and alone. And then this happened. Put the gun down now. Show's over. I thought that going in stealth was probably the best decision, as an all-out firefight with a banana would prove to be quite difficult. Next, I tactically sniped the guard on top, hoping no one around would hear me. I freed Valentine, but knew escaping would be a close shave with death. So once again, I used stealth. I almost killed myself shooting this guy, but I missed him, the explosion barely hitting me. Of course, it was all part of the plan. I convinced Darla to leave for the XP, and then I made the penguin feel incredibly upset, so then he gave us a 10 second count. So, to be kind, I let him live for the 10 seconds he asked for. I noticed a house full of people, good or bad, didn't matter. The banana waits for no one. The next step was to kill Kellogg, without mercy, using a banana. I headed to the mayor's office, convinced him to give me the key to Kellogg's house, of course and then fell out of his window tragically ending my life. After being laughed at for failing to break into a bandit camp, <laughs> I went on a rampage and killed everything in sight, eventually including myself. I then suffered from a heart attack here. Chocolate. And then here again. Chocolate. After many chocolate attacks, I finally made it to Kellogg's lair. The challenge here wasn't the enemies, it was myself. After a good amount of death with both parties, I finally made it to Kellogg himself. I'm just up ahead. My big IQ moment was running to the back of the room and then just hopping around shooting everything. I looked pretty darn professional, if I might add. After about three hours of fighting Kellogg, I managed to eliminate the fool. And then, just to make sure he was dead, I had an incredibly long and awkward elevator ride with a 600 pound gorilla. Never make the mistake of walking by this place. We got to try out the very first virtual reality system, but it ended up being this lame game where you just walk around in a dude's brain. After decimating yet another Randy Savage, killing what I thought was a spider in the glowing sea, and experiencing this again, I made it to the biggest nerd of them all. We headed over to the genetics lab of nerds to acquire the Courser chip, which meant, once again, we needed to go in silently. At this point, I was starting to understand the banana a bit more. It wasn't easy to pick up on, nor was it a basic playstyle, but somehow it was getting the job done. I was impressed. Fun fact, the banana can detect an enemy up to 517 miles per hour, which is of great use in tight areas. Since Garvey would rather take settlements than take down the institute with a banana, I was forced into talking to ponies about their problems. Do you always point a gun at everyone you meet? I'm afraid I do. Luckily, these pony problems could be solved using a banana, which obviously filled me with great amounts of joy. I went around cleaning up any enemy I saw, spreading the fear of bananas throughout the commonwealth. After killing one too many innocent civilians in my aftermath of taking out actual bad guys, I needed to lay low for a while, so I headed to the institute to meet my son. And boy, did I meet him. Sean. I knew a mere banana could not slay that cribbed beast. I would need more firepower. So I returned to Preston, who gave me a bajillion settlements to save. So I went to each and every one, talking to ponies, killing glitched bad guys, using a banana as my only weapon every step of the way. It was difficult, but I held this banana with pride, knowing that if I could pull this off, anything was possible. We then went out to take back the castle, and I, single-handedly, accidentally killed all of our Minutemen. But hey, at least we got the castle. I continued fighting with the banana, taking every settlement back by storm, and even when I thought the banana wasn't going to be good enough or have the power, it always seemed to pull through alright. It even helped me get through this traumatizing experience. Chocolate? 
And finally, Garvey sent me to defend the castle. The horrific settlement grind was over. I had forgotten that I built a ton of turrets prior to this fight, so I suppose they might have slightly helped us fight the Institute. But regardless of how many turrets we had, I still needed to rely on the banana to provide us with the true firepower we needed to win this fight. And it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that much. I lost over 300 good soldiers that day. Not to the enemies, of course, to my banana misfires, but they did fight well while they lasted. And finally, we eradicated the Institute idiots from our castle, proving to me that this banana would indeed be able to destroy the Institute. We can launch an attack whenever you say the word. I'll get the details from Sturgis while you get the Minutemen ready to attack. Yes, ma'am. Now, this part of the campaign takes pure skill. Only the best of the best can complete this with a banana. And I'm telling you, it wasn't easy, seen as a banana is actually a type of food. As usual, I accidentally killed a lot, <laughs> and I mean a lot of our Minutemen on the way. But hey, all for the greater good, am I right? But I still pulled through. We managed to lay siege to the Institute, slaughter every single synth that opposed the strength of the banana. I finally fully understood the true power behind this upside down growing fruit and knew that maybe, just maybe, it was actually slightly overpowered. Maybe even to the point where it might be better than a spoon. I finally made it to Sean, who was fast asleep, so I quietly and quickly hacked his terminal and left without disturbing his afternoon nap. I made my glorious and risky escape, making sure that I was stealthy and strategic every step of the way. Being careful is the number one key to successfully beating Fallout 4 with a banana. As they teleported me out of the Institute, I decided to pull what I like to call an epic prank on all of the Minutemen still in there. And finally, with my mission complete, I would not press the nuclear detonation button, but rather would fire a thousand bananas all toward the Institute, all in one shot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you beat Fallout 4 with nothing but a banana.